What is up, guys? Welcome to the Think Computers Weekly Tech Podcast. This is episode 402. And of course, our podcast is brought to you by Amazon. If you go to thinkcomputers.org forward slash Amazon and happen to purchase something that gives a little kickback and keeps the podcast ongoing, of course, my co host is Ryan. What's going on? Not much. Just another week has gone by. We're already like a third of the way through the year. It's, I know. it's just going, going, going. It, uh, the weather's changing nice. Like I was out yeah. this evening was pretty nice out. So the That's past like point. three days, I mean, it's not typically bad, but it's been like kind of just cloudy and like a little cold. It's like back to the normal San Diego weather. And it is so nice. Like I went outside today just for like for a little bit. I just, I didn't want to come back in. It was like, <laughs> I just want to go sit at the beach, but obviously, you know, you got a lot of stuff to do, so you can't do that. But, um, but yeah, we're it's summer's coming up, and we have a product today that we're going to be talking about, uh, which is perfect for summer. Um, yeah, are you are you excited for summertime? Yeah, I was thinking about it. Like the pool has me excited. <laughs> like I always love going to the pool in the neighborhood. Yeah, it's out. it's always fun to see Ryan get a tan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, well, and like last this last weekend, I I mowed the yard for the first time, checked on okay. my sprinkler valves and heads and everything. So it was like it's really coming through. The grass is green again. And nice. yeah, so I'm, I'm excited. Yeah. I hate the heat. Like I don't like being hot, but the yeah, the fun. only thing that, so like living in San Diego now, this will be like, it'll be like three years, like in a, in a week, I think. Yeah. Um, the summertime is not fun at the like major beaches here because oh, it's, it's like it's tourist packed. season yeah. and it just gets so packed and it's just like, but luckily, yeah, like I've been here for a little bit. So like I know the little like I know the local spots where like tourists don't typically go, which is nice. So then you don't right. get stuck in that. But there's just a lot of traffic and everything. I try to just stay in my like little my little area here. Yeah. Uh, so I don't get stuck in all that. But it, it is it is always so funny because everybody's like, oh, yeah, summer, summer. And then like, you know, end of August, you know, all the tourists leave and you're like, ah, oh, I get the nice beaches back to myself. So, yeah. That's cool. So, yeah, but we have a lot to talk about this week. Some interesting things going on. Uh, before we do, did you see any – we didn't really post any on the site, but did you see any April Fool's tech stuff? Um, I'm trying to think. I don't – what was one? No, but I was getting annoyed today on my phone, like getting like article suggestions and stuff, like just you know scrolling to like news pages, and it was like, oh, this product – and then it was like two days old. So it was like a fake product. You know what I mean? Uh, like, yeah, yeah. So I saw I saw him coming through that way. Not necessarily on April Fool's though. I, didn't, I saw a few. I, I saw a couple, but I don't even remember. What you were. kind of just expect it. And none yes. of them were like, wow, like they really, like the marketing team really thought this one out. It was just like, kind of just like the kind of just, I know Be Quiet had like a bunch of fans like as a, like that would make you lift off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> or something stupid. Um, I know who else? Razor hats. I forget. There was like, I don't know. There was a bunch, but I didn't re- like. There wasn't any that I was again like necessarily like super impressed with per se. Sure. Um, and we will talk about a product that everybody thought was April Fools, but it apparently is coming out as a product, which seems really interesting as well. Um, but we're gonna jump right into all of our content for this week. Uh, the first thing. 
uh, if you guys do want to follow along, is that we, of course, have a show notes page right here that has everything that we're going to be talking about this week, links to everything if you want to follow along. Or, of course, if you are listening on audio later, you can get more information. Or if you just want to check back, everything is linked in our show notes. Now, the first thing we're going to be talking about is something that I think everybody I think everybody has these days. Everybody has some type of camera, whether it's inside the house, whether it's outside the house, uh, for just peace of mind, security. Um, I know that I have a can. Every, most people have the camera doorbell. We well, got to see when that say. Amazon package gets here, right? Wait, what? <laughs> you got to make. You got to see when that Amazon package shows up. You also have to see who's like at the door. You're like, do I want to get up? <laughs> uh, I'm not home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but most people have the camera doorbell, but then, you know, you do have either some outdoor cameras or some indoor cameras. Like I said, I have the camera doorbell, plus I have outdoor and indoor cameras. Um, just to, you know, you know, like I said, you always want peace of mind or like I live in an apartment complex and like when the maintenance people come in, you just want to, you know, make sure they're doing what they're supposed to be doing and yeah. all that kind of stuff. So uh, the problem with a lot of, cameras especially if you're doing like outdoor cameras is they have almost all of them have to be connected to power somehow right mm -hmm. so yeah. it's like running that long cable i had i had cables running uh back when i lived in pittsburgh from like the original wise cams i had it running you know into the little crack in the window and then back into the room yeah. I had all this crazy stuff going on to uh, keep those powered. Uh, but spot cam has new cameras that don't require any wires at all. So this is their spot cam solo pro and <clears throat> like you can put them anywhere because they're completely wireless, obviously. But on top of that, they, they, you know, they have batteries inside, so they don't right. require any uh, external power. And you can just recharge them anytime, which is really great. So they come in a pack of two or a pack of four. We have the two pack here. The two pack does come with a base station as well. And the base station allows you for full time recording. So all of these companies, um, more or less, have come to the subscription model, even, even oh, yeah. the YCM, which we all know. They're trying to sell you some subscription for cloud storage, for uh ai detection whatever it may be uh, all these companies they kind of realize that their hardware lasts a long time <laughs> they need some type of subscription model and spot cam also has a subscription model uh which we'll talk about but they um have this base station where you can just install a um an sd card and you have like 24 7 recording all the time um, if you wanted it. So, um, but yeah, the, the cameras themselves are pretty small, as you can see, um, 2.5 K cameras, they have, uh, audio back and forth. So two way audio. So if you did need to talk to somebody through the camera, you can go ahead and That's do better. that and nice. talk back to you. Um, very cool little, uh, this is their omnidirectional stand. And basically it's a big magnet. So there's magnets, on the actual device itself. And then you have this, and then this has a magnet on the opposite side. And basically anything that's metal, you can just clip these on. And it's very, very sturdy and everything like that. Um, the only thing I didn't like about it is like, if you wanted to use these inside somewhere, um, just standing on their own, just like kind of how you have them here, they don't have a normal stand on the bottom right here. So if you wanted to stand them up on a desk or on a shelf, you really can't angle them at all. In yeah, and they look like they're pointing almost up a little bit in this picture. Maybe they're not. pretty. I mean, the, the viewing angle is quite wide, okay. uh, like most of these cameras are. So that's but not still, but it'd be nice to be able to. Yeah, to be height. able to move them just a little bit, um, I think that would have been all, a lot better. Now, the bottom does have your quarter thread. So. You could put this on anything that supports a quarter thread, which is like, you know, little, you can buy anything, uh, mostly that are made for cameras, but you can do that. Um, but yeah, I, they're, like I said, they're really small. They're really easy to use. Now, the only thing that kind of bothered me about these is you hear completely wireless. These are completely wireless, mm -hmm. but in order to set these up, you need a wired connection to your router. 
So okay. I've reviewed cameras in the past where it, they, you know, all of them now come with the base station. Mm -hmm. um, you plug the base station in just like this is just a plug base station. You plug it in and then you connect to it via Bluetooth through their app. And then you select your network and it connects to your network and then you're done, right? Yep. Very easy to do. But this one, for some reason, requires Ethernet. Now, I like the idea of Ethernet. I like the solid connection, right? Back to the, you know, I, I like having the better connection back there. But for like the normal user, like I know so many people that they didn't set up their router. Like they have no clue what they're doing. Right. Or they um, don't, they don't have like any wired devices. So they don't even have an Ethernet cable. Now this might come it, this, with one, but this comes with the Ethernet cable. Okay. But at the same time, like, I mean, I had to unplug something from my <laughs> switch. Like, you know what I mean? To use yeah, yeah. these. Like that was kind of and there's no way to do them wirelessly. Even if you set them up initially via Ethernet, there's no way to do it. Um, and one, I mean, the Ethernet cable is like decently long, but I mean, it's still you still need to be in relative distance, right, to it. So that's a little weird, in my opinion. Um, you know, but and then another thing on top of the base station is a QR code. And as you're going through the process on your phone to get them all set up, you have to scan that QR code. So like I, you know, over by my router, I, I connected this and put it back down in. And then I'm like going through the thing. I'm like, oh, I have to go back down in there and try to take a picture uh, of this yeah. QR. Like it was it was a little it was just a little annoying to say the least. Um, you know, where the wireless, even though it's wireless, like the wireless connectivity for the base station. And I like I said, I went through that process on other uh, security cameras like this so much easier and again for the end user like th like there's so many people and even say like if i didn't have my switch in here a lot of like apartment complexes the switches are built into like a uh elect like electricity cabinet and like oh, the end user access, yeah. yeah the end user has never gone in that cabinet ever mm -hmm. you know what i mean um because <clears throat> most of these new especially like if you live in a new complex everything's pre-wired so you don't even like know where your router is, you know, unless you go in that cabinet. Um, old man in the chat says, do they use an app to send notifications when motion is detected? Yeah, that's one, one thing I really like about the spot cam. So um, this, these are pictures from the app itself. Um, and I use it on my iPhone, but they have web-based as well, which is something that a lot of companies don't offer. A lot of companies are app only. You mm -hmm. can't do it through the website, um, but here, very easy to go in and you can see how much battery is left. You know, you can do a live view. You can get alerts. So you can get alerts um, via the app. Like, so just send you a push notification to your device. But on top of that, it can send you emails too, which I really like. Um, sometimes just push notifications are weird. Some, sometimes they don't work. We've all been there. But like getting an email, you can see something, you know, um, something's up and, and you can do that. So you can easily set notifications. You can do any, everything that you can do on most cameras. Like you can set zones within the um, actual area. You can set timers. You can do all of that. Um, I really like that. And then, like I said, they do have a, like a full on website where you can view everything. So you can go into any browser, you know, and see what's going on, which is pretty cool. Hmm. Uh, especially if for some reason, someone steals your phone or you're in like some, you're like, I have to see what's going on at home. You can just right. like Wherever go into the Apple store, go to spot cams website, log in and see your stuff, which is, is really nice. Um, so definitely like that. We have video tests in the article if you want to see it. Um, and it, you can record up to 30 seconds uh, of motion. Like when it detects motion, it will record for up to 30 mm -hmm. seconds, which is nice. And again, you can have full time recording using their uh, the base station in an SD card. Now, they do offer seven days of uh, cloud storage, which is really nice. So any motion that's detected, it's automatically uploaded to the cloud and it stays there for seven days for free. So you don't have to pay for anything nice. like that. Now you can pay for longer plans, but typically if something's being recorded, maybe somebody steals something from your house, there's a break in, uh, you know, you were gone during vacation for a week and 
Amazon said they left something there, but it wasn't there. You find out your neighbor stole it, <laughs> you know, whatever those things may be tip, yeah. you know, you can go back at least seven days. Um, so I think that's, that, that covers most people. Now, if somebody wants a longer period of time, you can buy longer packages through spot cam. Um, I, I like these. I think the setup process was a little for, for a non tech person, it would be just kind of annoying. I think. Uh, with having the the wired connection and all of that, going through the going through the app and going through it is pretty easy, but connecting things to your router and doing all that was just a little bit annoying. Um, I do feel like their app is a little slow too, mm -hmm. and it's been like that since we've been reviewing SpotCam products for years, and the app compared to other ones, it's just a it's little slow. Finished. I don't I don't know what it is. It's just. To me, it's just a little slow. I was curious, like what you said that they can record like just full time record and they're recording back to that micro SD card. Did you do any of that like recording uh, to just like and I'm, I'm just curious, like what battery life you get when well, that's, you start that's, doing that's, the 24 seven recording that well, if you're 24 seven, if you are 24 seven recording mo they're initially set up to re just record motion, right? Okay. So you're not going to record 24 seven. Now good. you can set them up in other ways, but yeah, so their battery life is all dependent on how much motion yeah. there is. Yep. I initially set one of these up on my balcony pointing at the road. And uh, if you guys have heard this podcast, <laughs> so all the before, time. it's always going. And oh, yeah. the battery was dead within the weekend. Like it was okay. not long at all. And I, then I set them up like in like around here, like, a, you know, and they've still been lasting for a while. Um, they say up to six months. Um, one thing that's nice is that the the omni omnidirectional uh, mounts that they have, like you you mount the mounts, and then you can just pull the camera right off, right? Yeah, you don't have yeah. to remount, uh, which is nice. But again, if you are planning to put this in a busy area, you will have to recharge quite often um so that's something to keep in mind because you have to remember when you're recharging you don't have coverage on whatever you're trying to do i mean you can um, plug these into a like power source to have yes. them always on right yeah USB you can you three, can right? plug these into a power source spot cam themselves do sell like the solar panel adapters mm -hmm. too and all that kind of stuff that just like cool. everybody else yeah. um, but for a truly wireless solution i think they are pretty good i think installation could be better um, and I, I just don't know what it is with their app. It's just a little, little slow to me. Um, but beyond that, I, I think they're, they're pretty cool. Uh, the two pack is, is $300. Um, so I think that's a decent price for what you are getting as far as mm -hmm. all, all of what this offers. Um, but yeah, I, like I said, I, I think it can be improved. Um, mainly the installation and the fact that you have to plug them in. And I just wish their app was just a little bit better. It's just, I don't know what it is. Um, but yeah, I gave them an eight out of 10. So if you're interested in something like that or have more questions, definitely let us know. Moving on from there, um, we talked about summer and uh, one of the best things, whether you're at a pool party, whether you're hanging out with friends, you're at the beach, wherever you are, you want some good tunes. You want some music. Yeah. You want to yeah. want to set the mood, whatever it may be. <laughs> um, you know, and uh, Tribit sent us over their Stormbox Flow portable speaker. Uh, this is going to be a great little speaker. I love Bluetooth speakers. Like, I don't remember what I did before Bluetooth speakers because when I'm working here in the office, I typically have a Bluetooth speaker because I'm listening to podcasts on my phone. So, like, if I'm shooting B-roll in here. Bring the Bluetooth speaker in here. If yeah. I'm making dinner, take the Bluetooth speaker. You know, I listen to music in the uh, shower. Bring the Bluetooth speaker into the shower. It's like all like I've, I've been, yeah. It's always like I always have a Bluetooth speaker around uh, for those reasons. And then for travel or going to the beach, it's just great to have uh, a sound source that's better than your mm -hmm. phone because if you're outside somewhere, especially at the beach where it's a little bit loud, you know trying to get everybody to huddle around your phone to listen to music isn't, isn't going to be great. Um, so the Stormbox flow is a portable Bluetooth speaker and it has some pretty cool features. Um, 
One is that it is IP67 waterproof rated. So you can throw this in the water. It's going to survive no problem, uh, which is great because everybody has those accidents, whether it's it gets knocked in the pool, somebody just, spills a drink on it. splashing even, you know. Yeah, splashing, whatever it is, you don't have to worry about that. Completely waterproof, which I definitely like. Um, another thing is that, uh, like all Bluetooth speakers these days, uh, this has a Type-C connection right here on the side. The Type-C connection, of course, is made to charge the actual uh, Bluetooth speaker, but you can charge any other Type-C device with this, which is nice. And for some reason, like the really well-known brands, they don't have backwards charging for some that's reason. That's so weird. Like that's such a nice feature I've seen on like, yeah. a couple products, like recent more and more products recently, and it's so handy. Yeah. So you know, you're out. You you know, typically I bring a Bluetooth speaker, I bring a portable battery, but if for some reason I forget my portable battery, mm -hmm. I can just charge from this, which is really nice. Um, this has a 30 hour battery life. Uh, which is really, really nice as well. So this is going to last you a very long time, uh, multiple days and and things like that. It's not over. I wish I had it. I, I did have it. I had it in the other room because I was making lunch earlier and uh, I was listening to music. But uh, it's not overly large, but it's not uh, super small where you don't get a lot of power as far as uh, the audio performance. Uh, this is a 25-watt speaker. It sounds really great. And it does have this X bass mode that you can enable and it like it thumps like it's it's kind of impressive um how loud this can get as well so it's going to be really great for both indoor and outdoor use because there are a lot of bluetooth speakers that are kind of small and kind of cheap and like again you're you're at a bonfire you're outside with friends maybe even at the pool and like you can barely hear it this is really loud um, so it's going to be great for both indoor and outdoor use which i definitely like you can also link these together so you can link two of these together and then one will be the left channel one will be the right channel so you can have like really really good sound um that way as well which is pretty cool they also have an app so you can download the app um and you can go through different eq modes um there's preset eq modes like x bass audiobook classical and it goes down there's like four or five that you can go through but you can also set your own customized EQ as well. So if you know kind of what you like, you can set your own EQ within the app, which is pretty cool there as well. I really like this. Um, it's $79.99. Uh, just a great thing for the summer. Great thing for travel. I really like waterproof because just yeah. maybe you're not the, uh, you know, you're the careful one, but you're out with your friends and you know, your friends are not the careful people and they're, you know, you don't have to worry about something getting broken or anything like that. This is going to be uh, great for that. So I gave it a 9 out of 10. Um, oh, it, it is a little heavy compared to some of the other Bluetooth speakers, but I think that keeps uh, – I think that speaks to the quality of the speaker. Old man in the chat says 25 watts is really good for a portable speaker. How big is it? Yeah, like compared to a cell phone, like size-wise. <sighs> Here. You talk, to old, you talk to everybody in the chat. I'll go get it. All right. Yeah. So I, I saw when from this angle of that, that picture, it looks like it might be deeper than it is, especially to get all that base that he was talking about. But the side view made it look not very thick. Like from the picture, it looked like it might be like an inch, inch and a half. I guess we'll find out. Uh, I need to replace my Bluetooth speaker that I have. It's it's like a really small one, a single speaker, like, I don't know, two and a half inch speaker that just is not adequate enough for the pool. All right. So here here's the speaker. Here's, okay, yeah. So here's an iPhone. Oh, wait, let me do it this way. Speaker. Oh, wait, do it this way so you can't see all my. <laughs> oh, you notice it. Right? Yeah. Uh, That's speaker. a decent size bigger and then like one. Yeah, this, is, an I, this is an iPhone 15 Pro. So not the Pro Max, just the Pro. So, and then, I mean, it's not like super thick either. Yeah. Um, what, one thing that's also cool about it that I didn't mention is that you can set it. I mean, put it over here. Like you can set it like this, right? So it's you get the sound kind of directed this way, yeah. but you can also set it like this and get more omnidirectional sound as well. So I really like I I like this thing, and like this is gonna be my speaker going forward. Um, just quality, really easy to set up as well. And for like again, we talk about like non tech people. 
This does have a dedicated Bluetooth button. It's not one of those ones where you have to like hold in the power button uh, for like three seconds. And you got to know like the combo. Yeah. 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 So it has a dedicated Bluetooth button um, and you can connect it to up to two Bluetooth devices. Um, so, you know, say like, like Ryan, like your wife, you know, she doesn't have to repair every time. Mm -hmm. If you guys wanted to switch who's playing the music and everything like that, really, like I said, really easy to go ahead and use this. So, yeah, definitely uh, the thing for summer. So check out uh, our review of that. Sweet. Yeah, really cool. Um, let's see here. We'll move on to Case Mod Friday. And we have a really cool build here. This one is called Dystopia. <clears throat> and it is from Mayhem Mods. We haven't featured him in a little bit. So yeah. this one is done inside of the Sharkoon CA700 Elite which is one of these sort of open air chassis and actually from like Sharkoon, who's like typically known for cheaper cases. This is a pretty nice. I know like, obviously he's done a lot of modifications, but yeah. just in general, uh, it's a pretty cool looking, uh, build here inside the, inside the system. These are always just like, so not like not taking anything away from, uh, may have mods but like these cases really make the build process so like not easy but like you you always get a good looking system with these i think yeah there's already so much done to them to make them stand out compared to like a standard case that yeah like you said you can slap some, yeah again not to take away from it but like slap some logos on and some additional pieces here and they look pretty crazy yeah, he uh he put the the ada 64 display uh -huh. over here which looks great yeah. all of this like extra is all him it's, it's all his yeah, stuff he's yeah. done a really good job there of course custom water cooling um but not for the gpu just for the the cpu uh you can see right here you you know the reservoir put in here and ek parts yeah it's just a nice cool looking system i think i like it not being water cooled on the gpu on this one because it like I think if you would have added the the block, it, it would have been too much glass. You know what I mean? Like this yeah. just looks like a very metallic, you know, tough machine. Obviously, there's the bigger like reservoir and distro plate, but I think it looks good with the non water. Yeah, I think there. overall it, it's it's a nice build. I really like these. I would love to have this type. We've seen this style for a while, mm -hmm. and I would have I would really like, but it's just too big, especially for like now that I drive the CES taking. A big machine like yeah you're not would not be <laughs> no. would not be ideal so well uh, yeah but i really like this shout out to mayhem mods for this one um of course and we have our full section of case mod friday builds if you're ever on the website and you want to find it just go to articles case mod friday and they're all listed there we have 62 pages of case mods so uh lots of cool stuff to mm -hmm. check out there uh, we also have a new giveaway. So we're giving away nice. the Corsair M75 wireless gaming mouse. It's going to run for two weeks. Uh, just like all of our giveaways, we do it through Gleam. You fill out the uh, little widget here, and then there are 16 different ways that you can enter this. Super easy to do. Uh, the only thing that we require is that you sh you sign up for our newsletter. That's it. So awesome mouse. Um, yeah. Get, get your get your entry in super super easy to go ahead and do that um old man in the chat said those cases always remind me of gundam uh head on a mech yeah or he said maybe armor core yeah that's why i really like them they like they really stand out and they're like especially if you have it sitting on your desk like it's something it's not the normal pc case and it's something that people kind of gravitate to and i really like that about those so yep. So yeah, we'll move on to news. Uh, so this was not <laughs> an April Fool's joke. And when I saw it, I was like, and again, I have so many questions because well, we'll just we'll we'll talk, we'll we'll show you what it is and um we'll 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 discuss it. So Asus put this out on social media. Um the how do you how would you say this? Mo Moliner. Moliner? Well, yeah. Okay. Thor's hammer. Okay. Yeah. Molnir. So this is a portable power station, and, and these are really popular in the camping scene uh, because you want portable power or like the doomsday preppers and, and all this stuff, right? 
portable power and a lot of portable power not not to just not like a portable power bank like the little ones we all have these right, are one. like thousands of dollar and we saw a ton of these at ces too yeah there's always a lot of them now the question i have why is why is asus making one and why is specifically asus rog making one and again they say this is not an april fool's joke and i don't think that it is well you know like okay think of it as a an asus or an rog like apc battery backup right like it's a there because it's probably gonna have like good power conditioning right it's multi-purpose so like you hook it up use it with your computer all the time and then if the power does go out guess what you've got this battery unit that's multi-purpose and you can go power something else up with it right maybe that's their i could see that that makes a lot more sense because right. when you think about the the big battery bat like the big uh power things like this right they're mm -hmm. either for camping they're for like off-grid cabins that yep. a lot of people go yep. to and they need power obviously and it's off-grid so you can't have power all of these things right and like typically and rog is a gaming brand like typically when you're going to do these activities you're not you a lot of time you don't even bring a a, a laptop or thing you're not doing the gaming so that's why I just had questions yeah. about it. But I mean, if you anything, say it makes if, a lot more sense. Yeah, if they were wanting it to be the other thing for like the <clears throat> cabin or camping stuff, like I would expect it to be a, a, a tough series, right? They're tough series branding True. with it. But yeah, I think in the like battery backup sense and using it like that for conditioned power and as a battery backup. And then if something, you know, the power does go out and you need it, but it's going to also. Be okay. Also, maybe you are an off-grid person. Maybe you do want to live in the cabin in the woods, and but maybe you're a gamer. Maybe you like to game. <laughs> yeah, Can't maybe give up you the know. gaming. Yeah, uh, and you got Starlink, and you know you got you got this. You got your gaming PC. You got Starlink. You there don't you need go. anything else. Yeah. yeah, you you know you go down go down to the tree, go down to the the creek, and do your business. You're good. <laughs> Completely <laughs> off-grid. Hey, I know that life. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it is kind of interesting. It is. Um, they say more information at Computex. Um, that's that's my guess is that it's going to be something like that. Aim yeah, well, you that. say makes the most sense. Yeah. Um, it would and be. It looks right, like they've but, got some display there, right? Like how many watts or yeah. Most of most of these see. most of the nicer ones have all the right. display that shows you everything and looks and like all two that. type C's, two type A's, and then something below it. I don't know what that bottom. It is. It is interesting to see this because, or just to see this tech because we've seen it kind of evolve over the past mm -hmm. five years because there have been products like this again years ago. They just were so like industrial and now they all have screens. Now they all have all this stuff and the, the batteries in there like last a lot longer now. Like, uh, yeah, they're a lot smarter. Like you don't have to think about using it. You could just like yeah. plug stuff in and it works. And it looks like this maybe has like a fan on the side. For yeah. Some, well. Yeah. Yeah. Something right there. So, hmm. uh, but I mean, if you think about it too, this is a pretty big, segment these are huge like again we saw a ton at ces um so it's it, i mean it makes sense for asus to kind of get into that product category i'd say and that people were saying that you can like connect something to this maybe yes yeah, so i, don't I mean i presume that. it is a handle for it right to carry it which seems like you would want to almost take that thing off because it just seems no like but i think this away. is to they said like that this is to you can connect to something there which i don't know what that's about but maybe you can slap a solar panel on top of it that's what i was thinking it, right yeah who knows? but who, who knows what what this is going to be but pretty it'll be pretty interesting to see uh obviously computex will will uh hopefully get more information on that also talking about asus this this is not going on now it's a hundred dollars more now but for one day for some reason on best buy you can get an ROG Ally, not the not the Z1, not the Z1 Extreme, but the normal Z1 for two ninety nine. Was it just online? Because I went in there to Best Buy the other day, and I saw a, an Ally sitting there, and it had a lower price. And I I stopped and looked at it for like two seconds, and then kept going. And I don't remember if it was two ninety nine or three ninety nine. 
Well, now it's back to three ninety nine, but okay. it was two ninety nine. That's wild for like a day or two days, and then it's back because we have the we have the actual link. Like if you go to the Best Buy link, it um it's back to three ninety nine because you know this one says save two hundred. Uh, this one only now it just says save one hundred, so it's three ninety nine now. But I mean two ninety nine, like that's. Yeah, in the realm of like, okay, I'm just gonna buy this thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's it's not a bad. But I saw price. it when I looked when I got closer to it. I was like, this thing's bigger than I'd want, anyways. Yeah, it's, but I mean, it's it, this is this is like, two ninety nine is a very like stomachable oh, price. Yeah. You know what I mean? For what it is, heck yeah. Yeah. So really, uh, yeah, not anymore. It's still three ninety nine, which still isn't a horrible price. No. Um. So yeah, it's the it's so crazy to see the competitiveness in pricing on all That's these. That's great, you know, because you you see these they're a thousand dollars or six ninety nine, seven ninety nine, five ninety nine, and now mm -hmm. I mean they're you know two ninety nine, three ninety nine, four ninety nine. Uh, yeah, pretty pretty interesting. But sadly, this this deal that was going on is not going on anymore. Uh, but we have seen some like really interesting spring deals pop up as well. There's a lot of springtime deal stuff going on um i think this is going to be a year of a lot of deals and stuff too because uh, the economy is kind of like you know and brands are going to get competitive and again especially in tech we're sort of in this lull space when it comes to the graphics cards cpu stuff so it's all going to be competition throughout this year so it's going to be pretty yep. exciting to see uh moving on from there another discounts uh amd radeon rx 7900 xtx so that's the highest one um <clears throat> discounted down to 889 it's the lowest it's been um this is with a coupon code but still uh, through new egg. So it's nine 49, but you get a $60 promo code, uh, that you just put in. I mean, that's, that's a good deal for good card. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and uh, this is like, this is the lowest one, but you can still get like other cards, the other XTX models for right around 900 bucks. Um, and this one's only eight eighty nine, but like nine, you know, uh, right around 900 bucks for a lot of those. So again, just prices continue to go down on these. Uh, yeah, like towards the end of summer, I think we're going to see a lot more price prices going down yeah, there. Be great as well. Now this this story is really interesting because there was a time where I played competitive gaming, like I was real serious about it, um, and I, I was in tournaments and and things and. Um, now I was in tournaments where it was like my own computer. There wasn't like, you know, all the big pro tournaments now. Right. They provide a machine. They provide the machines and they they do all of that, right? Right. Um but this is I would be so pissed. So during <laughs> the uh, million dollar CS2 tournament, million um dollars. Whew, one of the teams computer crashed and it was during the during the match, right? Mm. Um, and the other team won, obviously, because the other team down was down one player, and they found out that the it was an NVIDIA driver crash that caused it. So that and we've all had an NVIDIA driver crash. Sure. You know, um I'd be pissed. Well, yeah, if you're at the point where you're playing in a tournament and the top prize is a million dollars, right? Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, and like the, the system was a Ryzen 7 7800X3D and okay. a RTX 4080. So it's not like, you know. Um, yeah, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. What was the, like, the, the so the driver just crashed? So I'm, I'm guessing you just, like, crashed to the desktop or something. Yeah, I, I assume that's what happened. Or like it just the game, like if you had an NVIDIA driver crash, like the game just stops or the system halts or the system restarts or whatever. And then you're down like a, down a player in the game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. And then it's like, do that. 
do they what do they do they have contingency plans for that to pause it doesn't look like they do because it, it says didn't they, seem the like the team won was. the round there's no way to like yeah. like oh we had a machine crash and then where do you go like where do you step back to to and like so the, over the pgl which is who is running the tournament they said that they it's like meticulously right? optimized each you know the systems for counter-strike so what like that's just crazy hmm. yeah that's uh, i i would just be so upset if something like that happened in a tournament i mean think about it you're you're talking about a computer you know that like it can happen this is very true it, it can definitely happen so uh moving on to there i saw there's these new aios from a company you've never heard of um i saw this these are pretty cool it is kind of neat um so these are from a company called tricks tricks yeah uh this is their and they, this is like a chinese company we assume because this is chinese writing um on these pictures uh their new aio is called panorama and it's called panorama because it has these curved amoled screens so this is what they look like and i have to say this makes complete sense with like i have an 011 dynamic here you want to see the screen through the front of the case. You want to see it from the side. And typically, you're angled. Like, I'm at an angle for my CPU right now. And right. typically, if you're in this setup, you're typically at an angle. So this provides a perfect angle to see what's on your AIO screen if if that's what you want to see. And, the, the, you know, you can see, like, here's uh, a case that's very much like an 011. Um, and you can see the screen here. You can see it from the side. Like this is the angle that you're typically at. Um, and you can see the screen right there. Obviously not a whole lot of other information. These are just being shown. Um, but I like, I like where we're going here. Yeah, that's neat. Um, I mean, yeah, like you said, the, the ability to see it from whatever angle you're at. You know, yeah, and that's the, a 6.5 inch nice. curved screen. Um, on the actual looks like may maybe some daisy chained fans there too looking at the cabling possibly yeah. and i like the depth of, like on the the one that's on the back the black one it looks like it's all they almost made it look 3d like it's you're looking into the pump you know because you can do that yeah. that screen now that's cool yeah really really cool so it just we we taking all we, those we started we started from, from cell phones and the... we started from just a pump block then yep. we put some blue uh, you know, or LEDs on color. it. Yeah. Then we did RGB LEDs. And then we did the screen. And now we have these crazy screens. With, what's what's next? You know? Um, I mean, we have screens on the middle of the fan hubs now, right? Like, yeah. It's just it keeps on it keeps on evolving, which I which I definitely uh definitely like to see, but pretty cool uh to see that also. Uh, Minisform announced some new mini PCs. Uh, one is part of their new uh, Atom Man line, which I think is a horrible product name. <laughs> uh, you can see that right here. That's their liquid cooled uh, PC, uh, like which a, looks uh, like knock this. knockoff Skull Trail logo. Yeah. You know, <laughs> well, now that the Nux are done, I mean, That's, you know. Yeah. Man. Uh, but yeah, here it is here. And I, I really like this for like, Again, the people who like maybe want to go from like the console to a PC and like they just want something a small little box, you know. Mm -hmm. I think these are really great, and I do think that Minis Form is like one of the companies that's really taken these mini PCs to the next level as far as performance, feature set. Uh, we saw like the cool ones that they've come out with too. So I really like this. This is their UH185 Ultra. Um, yeah, really, really cool to to see that. They also have this one. Look at with the with the screen on it, and you could you know have the clock there. I, I think that's really cool as well. Um, and then they have even smaller ones like this. This almost looks like the ASUS ROG one in a sense, sort of. Yeah, a bit. Yeah. Uh, this this small little one right here has a Ryzen nine seventy nine forty five HX. Uh, Radeon RX 7600M XT. So, yeah, and then, then there's this one as well. It's like a router so, or something. Yeah, uh, yeah. 
it looks like a router. So, so yeah, pretty cool stuff for minis form. I think they're one of the big players, maybe not as much in the they American release market, a lot of products too, but they have a lot of really cool mini PC stuff. I hope maybe, I don't, I don't think they'd be, it's maybe if they are at CS, we got to find them and check out some of their products. So I think they make some really cool as much as like, I don't think Ryan and I would really make use of mini PCs. I think they do make some really oh, cool just, products. Just think like that, that one there or the, you know, one of the smaller ones that can be your CES rig, right? The one had the, the you know, 16 core AMD yeah. processor and a dedicated GPU in it. And if it fits, you know, you're not wrong, this big, right? Like yeah. instead of breaking down your system, yeah, bring that thing along. Yeah, that's that's not not a bad idea. So, so yeah, really cool to see that from them. Um, and then finally, uh, a report from TrendForce says that. SSD manufacturers are gearing up for a 25% price hike. So it looks like storage is going to get a little bit more expensive. That's the one thing that's not going to be as competitive this year uh, is storage. So, well, and like, especially with the, the earthquake, you know, in the last couple of days, like how much I know, cause I know I saw like TSMC and some other fabs took their, some of their product lines down right after yep. it happened you know so like how much does that affect it i think this was probably going to happen even ahead of the earthquake yeah yeah they also have before, additional happened, yeah. um repercussions to the the pricing as well yeah ssd pricing has been really good for the past year, year i'd say um or just like storage pricing in general um but yeah slightly slight price hike you'll you know uh they say like samsung is expected to raise prices by 15 percent across their consumer SSD portfolio, um, you know, enterprise SSDs can see up to 25% increase wow. in cost. So <clears throat> if you were getting, you're thinking about getting an SSD, like get it now <laughs> before these prices uh, get a little bit more expensive going through the year. But yeah, it, we have good times and bad times when it comes to NAND in general, that that encompasses mm -hmm. not only storage, but also memory. And we have, times where we have really great pricing and then times where like pricing plus availability is really crap as well so um it's just like an up and down thing you kind of have to to fight with so we'll see how that plays out throughout the year uh as well that is our news for the week we move on to what's coming next week and i have a really interesting keyboard uh this is the epo maker rt 100 mechanical keyboard um it, it's getting would, close to Noctua. I'll say it's it's not the it's not the full Noctua color, but it's this really retro style yeah. uh, keyboard here, mechanical keyboard. It also has they don't have any pictures of like the little. It has this like little computer thing that that goes on mm -hmm. the end. It's like a Type C, but it's a little display. Oh, it is okay. Um, and you can show you can show stuff on it. I wish they had a better picture cool. of it. Um, I guess they don't. I don't think. Let's see. They don't have one like further down on the page or anything. Oh. You think they'd want to show that off? Yeah, it's like right there, but oh, well, Kinda. on the purple one, you can see it, it That's will cool. show you some stuff. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, little part of the keyboard there as well. So, um, so yeah, I'll be taking a look at that, and also to, we we talk about all these uh rog ally we talk about you know steam deck uh one of the things that a lot of people do of course is upgrade the ssd mm -hmm. in there add more storage um so we're, we're taking a look at the viper uh viper gaming vp 4000 mini this is a pc express gen 4 by 4 ssd it's a m.2 2230 or 30 millimeter uh little m.2 look at this thing it's tiny it's like a little like, wi-fi it, card it's about the size of a quarter. I mean, it's yeah, it's then. so small, um, but perfect up to two terabytes, really fast storage for those small little devices. So uh, we'll be um, reviewing that. And then the following week, we'll, we'll have it in a, a pretty cool product, a product that we saw at CES actually. Um, so we'll be using it in that product. So uh, that's what's coming up. Uh, maybe some other stuff too. We Like I said, we always have a lot of stuff going on as far as reviews go i always send pictures uh to ryan of all the boxes that are at my house because yeah. there's always a lot um uh old man in the chat said 
Uh, those many PCs use laptop parts, right? Typically they do um, just for size constraints, but the depending on the mini PC, now a lot of the mini PCs will still use the same type of uh, power adapter as a laptop, but some do not. And some, some have dedicated power supplies or larger bricks than a normal laptop would. So you don't get as much power constraints when it comes to those parts. So those parts can boost higher or they can have higher clocks or whatever it may be. Uh, so in some cases, the mini PC will perform better than like a laptop with the same spec parts because that laptop has to operate under strict power uh, rules because it's because it, you know, even if you're plugged in, it's still based on whatever the adapter that it comes with. Well, and then some of them though will have more desktop oriented like CPUs if they're you know large enough and can yeah and cool them and everything. But, yeah, yeah that too. Of, so like typically the bigger ones are like they're really optimized. Um, and you typically will get better performance because it's bigger. It allows for better cooling because even like some of those like gaming laptops, they one, they're loud and two, they get so, so hot. Yeah. Uh, whereas the mini PC, you have more room, you can put more cooling in it. You can do all that kind of stuff. So, so yeah, uh, moving on to our question of the week, uh, this week, I wanted to see, or some people have been asking, like, what do we use for streaming? So what does, Ryan, what does your streaming uh, setup consist of? I guess just go over microphone, camera, and I guess lights. Okay. Yeah, sure. Uh, so starting with microphone, the Elgato Wave 3. And paired up with Wavelink software um, for that. I love this mic and the software and like just the ability to mix and adjust not just the microphone's audio, but my audio <clears throat> across, you know, across the board on my system. So very convenient there. Uh, my camera is a Canon M200. Um, and then that is using the HDMI out into just a cheap $20, $30 oh, the, HDMI the, USB yeah. capture card, you know, um, that's, works like a champ um my lights i typically or i used to use still have them the elgato uh key light airs i have one right here and one over here further away but the last like month or so maybe a little longer i haven't turned them on and it's because i switched lenses i used to use the kit lens that came with this but i've been swapping it out with my 22 millimeter and it does better in low light situations. So I don't yeah. have to have these like blasting in my face um, in order to have a good picture. Um, yeah, so I didn't I've do... actually not yeah. even been using them. I have a set of nano leaf panels above my top monitor and they're at a, like 50% brightness. And then I have a little like lamp off to the side here that's low nice. light. So yeah, that's that's the setup. Yeah, mine mine's a little bit different. Uh, so. For my microphone, I use the HyperX Procast. It's an XLR uh, mic, and that goes into the Sound Blaster K3, which is audio interface. So if you're using an XLR mic, you need an audio interface. So that's the audio interface that I use. My camera uh, is the Sony ZV-1, the, the original one. Um, I bought it to use as a vlogging camera, but it's pretty much sits, sits there yeah. sits there most of the time but it does it does have like it is you it's know, good it's quick i mean it's yeah it's that's fast yeah but yeah it's it's a really it it is a really good camera for streaming and stuff like that mm -hmm. um and then right above i have the camera and the uh lighting all on one stand I have the camera in front that's on an arm. And then on top of the, the stand that the camera's on, I have a, actually have a ring light. Um, Cause I bought like lights, like the, uh, they weren't Elgato's, but they were like the same. I just didn't like, like they were too bright. And like, they just, the, the coverage was just weird. It was way too bright in here. Cause I like, like yeah. you see like the little background lights and stuff. I like having stuff like that. The ring light, just illuminates me and not much else, which I, I really like. Right. And the ring lights from newer. Um, and what's really nice is I can take, I can just unscrew the ring light and just put it like away when I'm shooting 
uh, B roll and and all the other stuff because you don't see it in any of the product shots that we do like for products, um, which is really nice. And same thing with like the uh, the the ZV one. I can just unscrew it and take it if I actually need to use it for something else. Uh, so it's not just like always there. Um, and of course, just like Ryan, the ZV one HDMI outs into um, into the yeah the same like I think it was twenty dollar, uh, yeah. you know, HDMI interface. Uh, Do they know. work great? They're, they're I, awesome. that was like a thing. Like they were just like on Amazon, and then probably you can't you probably can't get them for twenty bucks anymore. Yeah, that's uh, I bought the, a backup one like six months ago. Oh, really? Because I was yeah. taking it to CES. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. I mean, they're they're great for just doing little streams like this. Um, and then I have uh, this camera charges via USB. So I just have a USB cable for, you know, to keep it charged while we're doing this. Yeah, I guess uh, I've got a, I have a dummy battery in my M200. Gotcha. Yeah. But that that's that's the streaming setup. And I just have like some lights back there but that's basically it i do i've been so i i got a new uh arm for this it's a uh, using it yet and no i'm not using it yet it's a low profile arm so we're gonna see how that works out um yeah and i may adjust where this camera i would like i don't know if i could put it in the center yeah the only reason i don't do center is because i have two i have two monitors stacked and i like this view though i like the side view Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yours is more head on than mine. Like mine is much more. Yeah, yeah, to the side. I could, I guess, I could get it here and then. Uh, yeah, it all, it all kind of just depends uh, what you're doing and and yeah. everything. But but yeah, that's that's the streaming setups. Um, if you're interested in streaming, Ryan did have an article on the website. Maybe I should like re revisit that because it's probably changed quite a bit. Yeah with just like the, how the application looks and everything. But yeah, I did like one or two. Yeah. Right. What was it called? Um, was it, it was Twitch. It was based on Twitch streaming, I believe. Yeah. Ryan, like streaming Ryan. to Twitch with Streamlabs OBS or something. Um, yeah. He has some, some articles on the website uh, for, for streaming. So if you want to, if you're interested in streaming, Ryan has some articles on the website on that. Um, yeah. We got to, we got to, do some pretty cool articles, I think, on some different stuff. Yeah. Uh, if you guys are interested in any uh, articles, tech related stuff, let us know because uh, we can we can do them. We have some pretty cool articles coming up on some different products as well. Beginner's guide to Twitch streaming. There's part yeah, there one and go. part two from 2019. Dang, that's that doesn't seem like it's that old, but January 31st of 2019. Dang. Yeah. Yeah, a lot has changed since then. Yes. Um. But yeah, so all right, guys. Well, that is. Oh, we didn't talk about it if we did it. Where's your 360 snowboarding video? Uh, on the SD card. Actually, no. It's yeah. I have the video on my PC as well. So yeah, we've been waiting because you know Ryan went on his trip and he got a 360 I, camera. And... I sh well, maybe not tonight. I was gonna say I could just fire up the. I should fire up the software and then share my screen, and then it can at least like show you. Or just you know like I mean? make make like a twenty second clip, yeah, that I we know. can play for for everybody. Everybody everybody wants to see your three sixty snowboard moves. No, they don't. No, they don't. Yeah, but um, did any anything else tech related that you wanted to talk about or that you did or? Um, I don't think so. No. Uh no, I mean I'm excited about a new product I got in. You know I'm excited to take a look at it. Nice. Um, yeah. So here, let's let me do this. Uh you're gonna break your computer. I know. I might. I, I might. We'll see. But let's let's just try. Uh share screen. You're gonna break your computer. Window. There we go. Share. All right. Let's see what happens here. Turn down this audio. So let's just like get to somewhere. Where this is their there? software. This is their software, yes. Okay. And I haven't done. I just like just pulled this video in. In was all right. So I, so like, right. So I can like I can zoom out and do all. This oh, stuff. that's cool. Yeah. So, and you can fully rotate around yourself. Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh wow. Yeah. That's pretty cool. 
It is. I, I, you know, like I said, I was pretty happy with this camera. And then, you know, I can like scrub forward to wherever. Uh, yeah. Oh, that is super cool. Yeah, it's it's neat. There's there's a lot of cool stuff. I think that you can. Um, there's there's like certain angles to hold it at that look better, right? And just like figuring out what those are. Yeah, this this software it has like an auto cut feature too. It, it does. It will, yeah, it does. And I haven't been, you know, I haven't messed with it a whole lot yet. But no, it's it's a. Um, now cool. you're making me want to get these for my upcoming trip I have coming up. It, you know, like. <sighs> I don't know. I can't. The the next camera thing I think I'm buying is a new main camera. Yeah. Yeah. That is cool, though. But yeah, no. And it's great because it's got, you know, I was using the invisible selfie stick. So it's the camera's just kind of floating out there. Yeah. You, know, you can't see the stick that I'm. The holding. one thing I like about it, I like about the 360 is like you really don't have to think about it. No, right? not at all. With like my GoPro, you have to you know, angle the camera where you want and all that kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. And I mean, there's, there's a couple like seam spots on the sides, right. All the way around because of where those two lenses and it stitches it together. Uh, but even then, if you catch one of those, like it still looks good. Yeah. That's uh, really cool on, on there. And you know, I was, this is like a five point, what is it? 5.7 K video at, uh, I think I just did 30 FPS on these. I don't think I did 60. I don't remember now. Maybe it'll tell me. Yeah, 57, 60 by 28, 80, 30 frames per second. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, look at that. It's playing it back just fine. I didn't blow go. my computer up. All right. Yeah, well, yeah exactly. that's really cool. Yeah. yeah. I may have to get one of those. Who knows? Um. Old man in the chat said he finally shucked and installed two eight ter 18 terabyte WD easy store drives Holy in my God. build. It's a lot of storage. I, I need to pricing error on Best Buy is how I got them. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. I need to find pricing error on WD uh, red drives for the NAS. The NAS, uh, I, I need to re up yeah, need some... my storage. I'm about ha a little over halfway full on mine. My, yeah. my 20 terabyte Making external. Me that I used to before everything goes on NAS is has three terabytes left. It's it's down to its Ooh. last. Yeah, get up there. I need to clear out some stuff. So, yeah. so yeah. All right, guys. Well, that is it for the podcast. Of course, we are going to be streaming over on Twitch, playing some Apex Legends. Twitch.tv forward slash Think Computers. If you want to continue to hang out with us, Ryan, of course, hosts that stream, so you can go over there and yell at him. Uh, if you want to, but he, he hosts that stream. So we'll be over there. So until next week, we'll catch everybody later.